church and the
there is one body, one spirit, even as ye are called, and one hope of your calling. Amen. Amen. So at this time, we're going to get ready and have prayer. Amen. And ask God to bless the church of the living God. Amen. So let us bow our heads. And all those requests that you may have on your heart, amen, God knows, amen. Remember us, amen, also in our body, we are running on <laughs> grace this morning. <laughs> we might seem a little out of whack, but God's grace is sufficient. Amen. Uh, the dog decided to take off in the middle of the <laughs> night just about, so we were up late trying to find him amen he didn't come back to four in the morning we got about three and so many minutes hours of sleep so we just thank god we're here this morning amen, amen. we're here for one thing and that's to praise god and we're here be because you are here we knew you would amen. be here and we don't want to disappoint anybody with the fellowship that we're having so let us uh give god the glory again and uh let us all agree in prayer. Amen. You want to lead us, my dear brother? Father in heaven, we humble ourselves yes. before thee, giving thee thanks and praise for another opportunity to gather before thee and before the foot of thy throne, Lord. We thank thee and praise thee for the fellowship that we can find uh, in the, the unity of thy spirit, Lord. We thank thee for Brother Morris. Yes, and uh, his wife, Lord, and the hospitality that he showed us. Yes, Lord. We just ask and pray that you would pour out a blessing upon them, that you would bless their hearts, Lord, encourage their hearts. We ask and pray that you would bless this broadcast this morning, that you would fill our dear brother with those words in which thou would have him to speak, that your body might be edified and that your name might be lifted up and glorified. We'll be sure to thank thee and praise thee for all that you do for us, for we ask all these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless. Amen. All right. Here's another song for you. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? on my side tell me where would I be where would I be he kept my enemies away he let the sun shine through a cloudy day he rocked me in the cradle of his arms when he knew I went better and scarred so if it had not been for the Lord, said he was on my side, tell me where would I be? Where would I be? He never left me all alone. He gave me peace and joy I never know. He met me when I knelt down to pray, and in pity the Lord brought me this way. So, if it had not been for the Lord, said He was on my side. Tell me where would I be? Where would I be? One more time. He never left me all alone. He gave me peace and joy I've never known. He met me when I knelt down to pray. And in pity, the Lord brought me this way. So, if it had not been for the Lord, said he was on my side. Where would I be? Where would I be? Where would I be? Say it, it, it 
Man, the song said, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? Oh, I can think of many places where I would where I would be, and they're not good places. I thank God, amen, for salvation this morning. It is such a blessing. So, amen. Uh, we uh, just thank God for his blessing this morning. As I was saying... It is a wonderful thing to get up to have devotion, prayer, and time in the word of the living God this morning. And I often say this to the children here. I ask them this question, what is prayer? They say talking to God. I say, what is reading the Bible? It is God talking back to us. You know, God has been good to us, amen, and we appreciate it. Amen, what he is doing. Amen, here in Chesapeake. We had a wonderful meeting this weekend, Brother Brian. He brought forth the word of God. Amen. And uh, we were able to rejoice in it. Uh, really had some good devotional service, too. We thank God for it. So we just wish you all could have been here. Amen. But I know in due time, some of you all out there on the broadcast, we hope to meet in the near future amen so we're gonna uh, have one more song for the glory of god what i did i increased the time because amen we had some problems initially in the beginning but amen god blessed us to overcome those problems so what we're going to do at this point we're going to have one more song for the glory of god and then we will get into the word of god all right
Amen. Did you hear what Amen the song was saying? I still have a song. Though the enemy rages, I still have a song. Amen. I tell you, in the midst of that test or that trial, it's a blessing. Amen. To have a song. I think about a scripture that some said something to the effect, God gives us a song in the night, but joy comes. Amen. In the morning. So we thank God for that. We're going to ask you to turn your Bibles to Revelation. Amen. And I'm going to set up where you could see. Amen. The PowerPoints. Amen. There you go. We're going to move ourselves down here. Put ourselves in the corner. Turn to Revelation, the 20th chapter, if you will. And what we're going to talk about this morning is the binding and loosing of the dragon series. Amen. I tell you what, um, these PowerPoints truly has been uh, effective uh, because a picture can paint a thousand words. And so what I'm going to do is kind of do a recap. I know some of you all. Uh, might be a little late coming in on it, but we've been on this series for a little bit. Well, maybe about a week or so. And um, sometimes I recap it so we can get an understanding of what we're talking about right here. If you turn to the 20th chapter, amen, it says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having a key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into a bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them and I saw the souls of them that was beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not worshipped the beast neither his image neither had received this mark upon their forehead or in their hands and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection on such. The second death have no power, but they should be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Well, first of all, just a short recap. The angel, amen, uh, is the ministry of the gospel. God never called Gabriel or any other angel, amen, to preach the word of God, amen. But these uh, angels that we see in Revelation are a symbol of God anointed uh, pastors and ministers and preachers taking this truth out into the world. The fact that their angel lets us know that, amen, this message is from above. It is amen. God speaking. Amen. Amen. We are God's representatives. Amen. Unto the church. If you turn to Revelation 1 and 20, can you turn there and read that scripture for me, brother? And it gives us the symbol, amen, here of the angels. What it say? The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest. The mystery of the seven stars which you saw. In my right hand. Uh huh. And the seven golden candlesticks. You know, I like that when he said, in my right hand. That's where they got so, to be. So, that, that's, that's where they got to be. Amen. Uh, the ministry is in God's Amen. hand. Amen. Amen. Go on. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. See, they're not only angels, but they stars. So, the Amen. stars became angels. That's right. <laughs> So here it is. So it's speaking in the um, 
uh, metaphorically, speaking of symbols, right. God's ministry, number one, they are style as stars. Amen. How do you know? When you go back, amen, to Revelation 12, 1 and 2, look what it says here. And, you know, it's not hard to figure it out who's who in the book of Revelation. If you follow, amen, the symbolic pattern, amen, you'll have an understanding of it. What does it say, brother? And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. There appeared a great wonder in heaven. Go on. Amen. A woman clothed with the sun. So this woman here is the church, and she is amen. clothed with the amen. sun. I consider Malachi, I think it's 4 and 2 and 4 and 6, somewhere around there. It said that the sun shall arise with healing in his wings. That sun is spelled S-U-N, amen, right. speaking. That was prophecy speaking of Jesus Christ, amen. He is the sun. He said, I am the light of the world. Amen. In him is no darkness, amen. Amen. He called us also, amen, to be the light, amen, in this world. And uh, here it is, we see a woman, amen, which is the New Testament church. In all her beauty, she was clothed with Jesus Christ because he is the sunlight, amen. all right? So she was clothed with the sun. And the moon under her feet. The moon is a represent of the law, amen. amen. Look, at, at, at nighttime, the light you see from the moon is the reflection of the That's sun right, hidden. Amen. And the Bible let us know that the law is a shadow of good things to come, but not the very image. It's only a shadow. Amen. Right. It pointed to Jesus Christ. Amen. The law was a schoolmaster to lead us to Christ. Amen. Amen. The law spoke about Jesus Christ. Amen. It pointed directly to him. He said, I didn't come to destroy the law but I came to make it complete. Amen. amen. I came to fulfill it. So the law showed us, amen, Christ. How did we see it in the law? You can go to the tabernacle and many other places by example in ceremonial ordinance and you will always see Jesus Christ. So here it is, we have a woman, amen, which is the wife of Christ, who is clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. In other words, she was standing on the word of God. What is so unique about this woman, amen, her reach, amen, is from, amen, the Garden of Eden all the way to the end of time. How do you know? Those that were born under the Old Testament. Amen. And believe that one day that Jesus, the Messiah, would come and die for their sin. Their faith put them in right standings with God. The Bible said these all died in the faith. See, the cross is the sin of everything. Now, we are on this, uh, the right side of the cross. And as we look back, we know that he... Uh, did come and die. They know that he would come and live. Amen. We know that he came and lived and died. And our faith brings us, amen, to him who is the center of everything. And isn't that something how he is able to take all of those, even those that are dead in him, or asleep, I should say, and we which are alive, and here it is, we all make up still that one body. I tell some people like, like this right here. Amen. We're all in. I'm in the same church that Abraham is. Right. Amen. Isaac, Jacob, Ezekiel, Daniel, the prophets, all of them. The only thing different is, amen, they're upstairs and we're downstairs. But it's the same church. It is the same house of God. So here it is. We see a woman, a beautiful woman. She is clothed with the sun. The moon under her feet, and what? And upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. 12 stars, that represent the 12 Amen. apostles of the Lamb. So here it is, uh, we see the church, amen. And God has given, amen, uh, the 12 stars, the symbol of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. So when we come back to Revelation, the 20th chapter, Amen. And let's look at this again here. We see this angel. 
Amen. We see a ministry in the morning time who came forth with power to Amen. preach this gospel. And it was two things that they had in order to preach this gospel. Any man of God, That's if you've been right. called by God, you need tools. That's right. Amen. A carpenter don't go to work without his tools, That's brother. Right. Amen. A plumber got to have his tools. That's right. Well, our tools is the key and the chain. That's right. Thank God. <laughs> oh, yes. It's the key and it is the chain. Why? The key is the word of God. Amen. The chain is the binding power right. of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How do you know? He said, I give you the keys of the kingdom. That's right. Amen. And whatsoever you shall bind on earth, amen, thou shalt bind in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So the binding and loosing of the, uh, uh, of the power or the authority of God's word lieth with the ministry. Amen. amen. Why? Because they have the power, amen, on the message, amen, to preach. And once that is preached, the key unlocks the door, which is Christ. That's Come right. on. That's and right. you are able to enter in. That's right. In Revelation 18. Yes. Christ preach, said, brother. I am he that liveth. Yes. And was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Hell and death. Amen. But he said, I. I <laughs> nobody right. have that key. And That's right. When he says I, that also incorporate his ministry. Amen. Because number one, they can't operate the key without him. That's you understand? The key, yeah. They can put the key in, but it takes Christ to make it turn. Right. <laughs> right. I just thank God for that. So here it is. We have some powerful symbols here. Amen. Amen. And when we look at some of these symbols, it is here, it goes on to say. And he laid hold on the dragon. Let me tell you something. People nowadays are bound. Do you understand? Amen. They are bound under the influence of the dragon or the devil. Say, you know, he's known by many names. So here it is. They're trying to do all sorts of things to get people free. Amen. You see folks bound by drugs, alcohol, and all kinds of things. And then they want to send them to a 12-step program of therapy. Let me tell you, you can't use therapy on the devil. Amen. He laughing at you. Amen. Now, I'm talking in a practical sense. But really, the dragon is a representation of pagan religion. And Amen. a lot of people are bound and locked in those religions. But also, let us keep in mind that the dragon is the devil. Amen. <laughs> and the devil is binding folks not only in false religion, amen, but he's binding them in sin. So in order for people to be loose, the gospel must be preached. Because he that the Son set free is free indeed. Amen. So when you preach this gospel, I don't care if you're in the state of sin, it's able, amen, to, amen, set you free. Amen. I don't care if you're in false religion. It's able, amen, to open or reveal Christ to you. Amen. amen yep. And set you free. And a watered-down, lukewarm gospel can't do that. That's right, bro. Amen. amen. A gospel that tickle people is, it can't set nobody free. Amen. You wonder why the people are not living a life free from sin? They don't have the right kind of gospel. It take a victorious gospel, amen, to deliver people. Amen. amen, nowadays. Now, it might come a time, school might start a little early, about 6.30, but we got Brother Bryant here. Amen. So he'll carry us through. Amen. We're going to 7 this morning due to difficulty. And let me ask you, what would you like to share? Say concerning this brother. Amen. Concerning. Uh, <coughs> concerning the binding and loosing of the dragon. Well, brother, we just like we we spoke about this this weekend. Uh, you know, the ministry has to have those tools. He has to have. Uh, he if he's going to go forth and preach the whole counsel of God, like we. Uh, like we discussed this weekend, yeah. he has to have those tools. That's right. God's not going to reveal things to 
someone without the Spirit of God. And he's not going to uh, have a message for the people without the Word of God. Those two those two tools are vital. They're requirements. They're not yes. uh, they're not uh, uh, optional. They they they're they're a must in That's order it. for the for the message of God to come forth. Praise the living God. Amen. That is so true. And I like this part here in the scripture. It says um, and I saw thrones and they sat upon them. See the Bible teaches us uh, that we shall reign. What are we reigning over? First of all, we're reigning over sin. We're reigning over false religion. It said, judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus Christ. Now, if we follow these symbols straight through, I know when you look at that, and amen, down through the years, many of us has been taught that this is talking about the martyrs of Jesus. But I want you to consider this start here. It goes on, and they that sat upon them, uh, uh, judgment was given unto them. So the Bible said, do you not know that the saints shall judge That's the right. world? Amen. Well, how? We judge them, amen, by living out the amen. gospel message. Amen. Yes, we... Yes, we do. Amen. So every day we are judging the world. Then it says, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded. Well, when the church started off in the morning, it had a head. Right. Yes, it did. Christ was the head of the church. The government was upon its shoulder. Amen. But I want you to know, amen, the church lost its head in the fact that that amen man rule the spirit of man rule began to come in amen. so anytime there is a body of people amen looking to a headquarter i want you to know and they don't have the right head they're beheaded amen. then it goes on beheaded for the witness of jesus and for the word of god which had not worshiped the beast amen because he hadn't fully developed neither his image he hadn't fully Develop. Neither had received the mark upon his forehead or in his hand, and they lived and reigned with Christ, amen, a thousand years. So amen. God yet had a people in this period of time, even though, amen, they were beheaded in the sense that they didn't have Christ governing the church, amen, they yet lived and reigned with Christ, amen. He didn't have a visible church. They were in obscurity, amen. They were in obscurity. There wasn't a designated church, amen, to point to. See, back when they first started, you can just about go anywhere. You can go to Corinth, Jerusalem, amen, and any other little town, and you can find the church of God. But amen, as things began to develop, and church and state, amen, had become one. Christianity was a prominent religion during uh, the Roman Empire of that day because Constantine made it so. Amen. The, the state church became, amen, their form of religion amen. which developed amen. pagan Christianity and the true saints. That's right. Amen. Or the true body of Christ was lost sight of. That's a great right, apostasy right. set in. Amen. And therefore, Christ was not the head of the church. The papacy developed. Amen. And there you had it. Amen. You had a body of a people that had man as their head, amen, and not Christ. That's right. Revelation 6 and 4, brother, says, And there went out another horse yes. that was red, and power was given unto him that yes. sat thereon to take peace from earth, yes. that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. This great sword, and that's amen. When, that's when the, the, the church and the state kind of merged they together. They merged together, amen. And, uh, and pagan Rome took its form. Praise the living God. And it took its form. And it did a lot of damage, but it could not uh, uh, snuff out the amen. church. All right, so if you look here, amen, let's go a little farther to the scripture, amen, um, where it says here, blessed in the sixth verse, it goes on, 
Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection Amen. on such the second death have no Amen. power. Now we're living in a time, there are so many theories, brothers, concerning the first and second resurrection. Uh, you know, this thing with the rapture, uh, the first and second uh, uh, resurrection, they got Jesus coming and going, you know what I mean? And they're going to, uh, he going to sneak away the saints and then there's going to be some people left here unregenerated folks. Right. Amen. Because if all the saints gone, ain't uh, the people, I'm, I'm going off their theory now, if they're left here, they're going to preach the gospel. God don't use unregenerated people. People who are not saved to preach the gospel. Right. We only have one chance. So let us look at what is the first and second resurrection. Very good, brother. All right, let's go to John 5, 24. Amen. And it will tell us what is the first and second resurrection. Amen. Give me a second here and I can get there. I better put on my glasses for this one. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, brother. Let's see. Let's Let's back it up to um, 20, uh, 524. All right, start there. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Yes. He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Amen. He that heareth. Amen. My word. Amen. So it is the word of God. Amen. That give us life. Amen. So he says in the 25th verse. Amen. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming. And now is, he's speaking present tense. When the dead shall hear the voice of the son of God. And they that hear shall live. Well, what dead is it talking about? Amen. See, because these people here have come up with two resurrections. They teach, amen, that in the rapture, and the rapture takes place before a seven-year tribulation, then after the seven-year tribulation, then they have a thousand years. So they teach that the first resurrection happens when the rapture happened. Then they teach that there's going to be another resurrection, amen, of the dead after the thousand years. So they got multiple resurrections, amen. They got Jesus coming and going. They might as well call him Elevator Jesus because they got him up and down, in and out. But I want you to know those are theories. Those are theories that man, amen, made up. Because if you look here in the scripture, Jesus tells us what is going to take place. He said, verily, verily, in the 25th verse, I say unto you, the hour is coming. And now is when the dead shall hear the son of, a, uh, uh, hear the voice of the son of God and they that hear shall live. Let me tell you, you can be dead in your sins, brother. Amen. Amen. And when you hear the voice, what is his voice? His word. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you, and it'll bring, amen, life to you. He said, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Amen. amen. You can't live apart from the word of God. Amen. The word of God is the seed that brings life unto, amen, a dead soul of men. Amen. How do you know? In Ephesians, the second chapter, about the fifth and sixth verse, it said, and you have he quickened who was dead in trespassing right. and sin. He made us alive in amen. Christ. He made, he raised us up to sit in heavenly places. So the first resurrection is when a man is dead in his sin, when he hear the gospel, amen. when he hear the voice of God, amen, he is resurrected from his dead state of sin to new life in Christ. Amen. Paul said, if ye be resurrected with Christ. If you be resurrected with Christ. Read it, brother. And John, uh, and John uh, 314, he said, we know that we have passed from death. Yes. Unto life, 
because we love the brother. Yes. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. You know, that's powerful, brother. So we got to be careful how we Amen. treat one another. That's right. We got to love each other. We got to love one another. Amen. Maybe you're not drinking and smoking and doing all of those things. But if you don't love your brother, that's right. Amen. Like the Bible said, Amen. You gonna miss out. That's right. Amen. You you, you don't you you don't even have part in the resurrection of life. Amen. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Amen. For as the Father hath life in himself, so have he given to the Son to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. But now, he was talking about... Um, the, uh, a spiritual resurrection Being risen from a dead Amen. state of sin That is the That's first resurrection right. Amen So before you can have a bodily A bodily resurrection You must first have a spiritual re Amen. resurrection Amen Something must take place in your heart Now listen to this Now he goes on in the 28th verse He said marvel not at this Now don't be surprised Amen Amen. In other words, what the effects of the word of God can do in bringing you salvation and delivering you from the power of sin, resurrecting you from a dead state, amen, to a position where you can serve God. He said, just don't marvel not at that. For the hour is coming. And if you notice, he didn't say, and now is. Right. See. Uh, when he talked about the first resurrection, he was talking about a present uh, experience Amen. happening. But now he goes on, he said, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. Amen. Talking about them that had died as believers in Christ, amen, who is in a resting place, amen, waiting, amen, on the Lord, waiting to hear that last trump. It said, marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. Amen. Separate they that have done good, amen, unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So here it is. We have the second resurrection. Amen. He explained what the first resurrection was. Now you have the second resurrection. Amen. So when you go back, amen. And when, it, in that first 25th sure. verse, brother, he says, and now is. And now is. That was present tense. You, you brought That's that right. out. Present tense and then future. Out future, in the future tense. That's it. All right, so look here in the 20th chapter again. It goes on. Let me back up to 20 and 5 because we kind of missed this thought right here. It went on to say when he was speaking of the souls being beheaded for the witness of Jesus. All right, then it goes on, which had not worshipped the beast, its image neither received its mark, and his forehead, and they shall live and reign with Christ a thousand years. And I emphasize the fact that God even had a people during the dark ages. Amen. Because the gospel Amen. wasn't being preached, Amen. but they were fed by the word and the spirit. Amen. Amen. God yet had a body. Even though they wasn't visible to the world, amen, some of them worship in caves, some of them worship in the forest. They worship in their home because, amen, that beast was so dominant amen. because of state and church and had a sword in his hand, amen. They will put to death and persecute anybody who would dare stand up against it. Amen. They would have things like trials. Amen. And inquisitions. Amen. amen. Persecuting the saints of God. Amen. She was so fed in, in the wilderness. Huh? She was fed in the wilderness. She was fed That's in the right, wilderness. Bro. Amen. So in the wilderness is a place of obscurity. Right. She was given two wings where she flew there to be fed. Amen. amen. Praise God. So and then it goes on here. 
It said, but the rest of the dead live not again till the thousand years, amen, were finished. Amen. And the thousand years were finished in 1530, amen, amen, when a little old monk in the Roman Catholic Church began, amen, to Thank preach the message, amen. amen. He found the key, amen. <laughs> what was the key, amen, right. that the just shall live by faith. Amen. And when he began to preach that, amen, folks began to live again. Amen. They began to experience the experience of justification, Justification, the new birth, salvation is all pointing to the same experience. Amen. Justification is the legal, legal aspect. Amen. Salvation is the spiritual aspect. Amen. Amen. The new birth is the spiritual aspect. Amen. Those are terms pointing to the same experience. So you know what happened as they begin to preach? Folks begin to live again. Amen. So here it is. So he went on to say, blessed and holy in the sixth verb is he that has part in the first resurrection. That's right. He that Amen. gets saved from his sin. On such, the second death have no power. That's right. Brother, the fact, glory, that we are saved Amen. right now. Amen. We're not afraid, amen, of dying, That's right. amen, of physical death. Because in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, amen. at the last trump, and it's right. going to sound, the dead in Christ amen. shall rise. And we're Do you looking forward it? to it. Brother. And we're looking forward to <laughs> We're not running from it. <laughs> oh, death, where is thy That's sting? Right. Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Amen. The sting of death is is sin, but thanks be to God who giveth us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. That's around 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Paul said, I die daily. Brother. He said, I die daily. That's right. Amen. <laughs> it said, blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection on which the second death have no power. Amen. When you've been delivered from your skin, you ain't scared to die. That's right. Amen. Death is just a transition. It is just, amen, a rest. It is just an open door to the afterlife. Amen. But they shall be priests of God. Amen. The Bible teaches us in Revelation, I think, the first chapter around the fifth uh, uh, verse, or either the tenth verse, amen, that we are kings right. and priests, and we shall reign. Amen. amen. Still with the same That's thought. Because right. these folks were reigning. Thank God. Then it goes on, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of right. his prison. Amen. Well, what was his prison? The bottomless pit. Amen. Religion that don't have a biblical foundation. Amen. Look, let me tell you, when you preach this gospel, you put the devil in his place. You Amen. put him back where he come from. That's right. When you when somebody come up, you can't live free from sin, and you take the scripture, amen, and you unlock their knowledge, and you can show them that there's victory in Christ. Every time you Amen. do that, you take the devil, and you put him back where he belongs. Him in up. the bottom, you bind him. <laughs> <laughs> and look, all heaven is standing behind That's right. Because he said, whatsoever you bound on earth, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound Amen. in heaven. In other words, all heaven is standing right behind it. Thank God. All right, brother, Thank let me God. tell you something. This is um, the, the book of Revelation. It isn't hard. People make it hard. Well, first of all, it's only for the servants of God. Right. Amen. It's not for the average man. You understand? When I say average, I'm talking about he that don't know Christ as his personal Savior. He that is yet wallowing in his sins. He that, you know, it's, it's like trying to understand how the puzzle works, but you don't have all the pieces. Mm -hmm. Well, the key and the main piece is you got to have the experience of Jesus Amen. Christ. What do you think about that? What are your thoughts on that, my brother? Well, <clears throat> I mean, the scripture says that you, you have to have you got to have the, the the key in the chain. That's right. Without the, the spirit, the you without the spirit, you're not gonna you're not gonna have no divine revelation. J uh, John said, "I was in the spirit on the Lord's day." Yes. And it was only until then that he heard behind him a great trump voice as a trumpet. Yes. 
It wasn't until then. It, you know, he didn't get the revelation before before he was in the Spirit on that day. God has to reveal the things through the Spirit, and we have to be in a position with God to accept what the Spirit is going to give us. Yes, yes. Brother, I tell you, uh, I like this part here, and this is up on the screen. And shut it and sealed it over him so that he would not deceive the nations any longer until the thousand years were completed. Let me tell you something. Is there something about the binding power of the word of God? Amen. Amen. It will shut folks down. You understand? People are living and dwelling in all these fables and these theories uh, that are made by man. They're dreaming of a carnal delight. Amen. Everybody going to have a, a, a 40 room mansion in heaven. You see, you know, they take scriptures and make them literal. You know what I mean? Take it as being literal. Um, and uh, they cause so much great error. Go ahead, bro. Well, you remember what it said in the 11th uh, chapter of Revelation about the, the word and the spirit, the two witnesses. Yes. It says, these have power to shut. To heaven, shut the door. Amen. That it rain not in the days of their prophecy. And have power over waters to turn them to blood. Yes. And to smite the earth with all the plagues as often as they will. Praise the Lord. They have power to shut the, door. the devil down. Amen. And that's those are the tools that we have to use. Those that's are what tools. you said. We, we need the tools. We got to have the gotta tools. Gotta the key tools. To, and, and let me tell you something. Babylon don't have a key in the chain. No, they don't have the tools. Amen. As a matter of fact, the dragon is running loose among them. Amen. <laughs> The beast is running loose among them. Amen. They got the false prophet running loose among them. Amen. How do you know? Look at the marks. Yep. Amen. Some He's so marking his adherents. Amen. Yeah. Some so-called church of God don't have the key in the chain. Amen. That is so true. Ain't that something? So Amen. that means you're saying, brother, that you can have the name church of God. Right. Amen. And guess what? Just be as bound as you want to be. Babylon is a condition. It's Amen. Not a, it's not a geographical location. It's a condition of the heart. That's it, brother. That's it. It is definitely, it, and it's a condition of, <coughs> excuse me, confusion. Mm -hmm. Amen. When you're confused, amen, it's because you don't have the key. Amen. God gives us the key of knowledge. When you have the knowledge of what is right or what is true, see, it will unlock you. Amen. It will set you free. Amen. Amen. You will come up and Thank out you. of that error. Do That's you hear right. me? Yes. See, look, Revelation 18 and 1. We got a few more minutes here. <laughs> I'm enjoying this. Amen. Bless. And I'm, I enjoy sharing it with you, brother. Amen. <laughs> Thank the Lord. I mean, you, you are blessing. I, I tell you, look, look at you this right here. Yeah, go ahead, brother. And, an, and after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Yes. And he cried with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Now notice this. This angel came down from heaven. That's right. Look at the 17, 17 and 1. What does it say? And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore. In other words, come here. I'm yeah. going to show you That's the judgment. Right. See, if God's ministry... Don't show it to you. You ain't going to get it. That's right. The Babylonian ministry can't show it to you. Now, here it is, the 17th chapter. He shows the great whore. The 18th chapter of Revelation, he tells you to come out of the whore. Amen. And guess what? You go to the 21st chapter. Amen. And the 9th verse, listen to what he says here. And there came unto me one of the seven angels. See, he, in every case, it's an angel that's, that's right. showing you this. He said, and there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven, amen, plagues, um, the seven vows full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me. Said, in other words, come on, we're going to have a discussion. That's right. 
come hither. That's right. <laughs> come on, come hither. Let me tell you something. He showed the whore. He told them to come again out of Babylon, come out of that system of religion. Amen. So he said, come hither. I will show thee what? The bride, right. the true church, the lamb's wife, because Christ ain't married to everything out here. Amen. Isaiah 4 and 1 said, in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, we'll eat our own bread, wear our own apparel, only let us be called by thy name to take away thy reproach. Amen. All this, and that was a symbol. Seven is a number of completeness that represent the system of false religion. Amen. Amen. There is a false woman out there claiming to be married to Christ. That's right. Now, just like Christ tell a man, do not commit adultery. Amen. God don't want us to commit spiritual adultery. That's right. You can't be married, amen, to a false church system, amen, and claim to be married to Jesus Christ. Amen, because if you're doing that, you're cheating on him. Amen. So here it goes on here. It says, come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. Look, and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain. First of all, mountains are symbol of a place of worship and is elevated high. So here it is. He, in order to see this, you got to come to the mountain. That's what right, mountain brother. is that? Mount Zion. That's right. Amen. amen. You have come unto Mount Zion, amen. the city of the living God. Why? That's where God address is. Amen. That's, right. That's where his zip code is. That's right. And, and me, me and Brother Morris talked about this the very first time we met. He mentioned, yes. he mentioned that those angels are saying, come up hither. That's it. Come up hither. That's right. it. But in the sixth chapter, the beast are saying, come and see. Come and see. That's you it. Remember, that's, uh -huh. that's how we met, that's brother. That's how we that's, met. <laughs> brother Amen. Moore said, come and see. And I said, come up hither. That's it. Because see, it's not, only the, it's not only the minister's job to show people what the church is. The church has to show people what the church that's is. That's it. That's that's beautiful. That's right. There. We, why we show them by living out the right. message that is preached to us. City set on a hill. That's it. When they preach unto us, even in the literal sense, modesty, how we should act, conduct ourselves, how we should dress and things of that nature. Amen. We are showing Amen. the city that is setting that's on the right. hill. Amen. We are representation of the message that's being preached. That's right, bro. And, and therefore, what happened? We judge the world. That's right. <laughs> Because we're ranging because of the message. Amen. So we begin to judge the world. That's right. People see it and they want it. And they want it. That's, That's it, right. brother. <laughs> I tell you, what a blessing. So here it is. And just to finish it all in Revelation 21 and 10. And it goes on here. I'm sorry. 21 and 10. It said, and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain Amen. and showed me that great city. See, Babylon was calling herself a great city too. Right. The holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God. Amen. She wasn't going into heaven. This city came out of heaven. Amen. Amen. And Jesus saw the city early on. He said, you are a city that sat upon a hill Amen. and can't be here. Amen. Can't see it without the spirit. You can't see it without the spirit. <laughs> that is so true. So at this time, we thank God. You know, the Lord end up blessing because the doorbell haven't rang not one time. Thank the Lord. <laughs> I don't know if it's simply because it's Veteran Day, but what has been such a blessing? The enemy fought us in the beginning in trying to get the broadcast off. Right. Oh man, because. It kind of had reconfigured itself, and a few things happened, and, it, you know, we're scurrying, trying to get things uh, going, and so we know you all were there waiting to, you know, share with us in this Bible study, and so thank God, though, Amen. because of persistence, we were able to prevail, and guess what? we able to put him in his place. That's right. <laughs> to show that the enemy is from the bottomless pit. That's so, right. Thank God for blessing us, and we'll be here tomorrow, amen, with some more of this, amen. And the blessing about this, we can edit out all those mistakes at the beginning. <laughs> amen. We can edit that out, so we want God to 
have his way. So God bless you and continue to support us. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. God bless you. Thank you.